Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about the investigation and the treatment of patients with hyperaldosteronism. In the previous video, we had discussed in details the definition, causes, pathophysiology, and the clinical feature of hyperaldosteronism. In this video, we will talking about the investigation and the management of patients with hyperaldosteronism. First of all, we will start with the blood test. A blood test which will include the following. First, we have serum electrolyte. Serum electrolyte are very important to obtain in patients with hyperaldosteronism because these patients may develop the following. Patient may have hypokalemia. Hypokalemia are uh, is developed uh, in patients with hyperaldosteronism as discussed previously and we know how hypokalemia is developed. So a patient may develop hypokalemia, which is manifested as serum potassium level less than 3.5 milli equivalent per deciliter. Second, the sodium level may be an upper normal level or mildly elevated. Second, we have a blood gas analysis. Blood gas analysis is very important to obtain. So this patient may develop metabolic alkalosis. So we know that this patient why develop metabolic alkalosis as the proton is lost in urine. So BH may be elevated. Third, we have serum aldosterone concentration and serum renin activity. These regard the screening test of choice for patients with hyperaldosteronism. Look at this diagram. We have adrenal gland and this is the adrenal cortex in which secrete aldosterone in case of primary hyperaldosteronism. The aldosterone will enter the circulation and from the circulation it, it will reach the kidney to, um, to enhance the process of water and sodium reabsorption. So aldosterone also will reach the Jacksraglomelar apparatus, which in which in this case will inhibit the brinine secretion, so aldosterone will will inhibit the release of renin from the kidney. So patient with hyperaldosteronism, the renin will not elevated as aldosterone is elevated and inhibit renin release. So this patient will have an increased level of aldosterone with decreased level of renin. As we mentioned, plasma aldosterone activity, when it is compared to the plasma renin activity, it will be high, which is known as aldosterone renin ratio. So the ratio between a plasma aldosterone concentration and the plasma renin activity will be high, which is usually more than 30, which is very characteristic of case of primary hyperaldosteronism. So just we have to interpretation the result as the following. Patient with hypertension and hypokalemia, and after we measurement of these three parameters, which is included plasma aldosterone concentration, plasma renin activity, aldosterone renin ratio, we will find the following. If patient has increased plasma aldosterone concentration with decreased plasma renin activity and the ratio between the aldosterone and renin is increased, which is known as aldosterone renin ratio. This patient, which is usually more than 20, this patient has primary hyperaldosteronism. If the patient has plasmarine activity which is increased as well as increased plasma aldosterone concentration but the ratio is usually decreased which is usually about 10 the patient has secondary hyperaldosteronism we must put this differential diagnosis in our mind in this case which is which is include We have diuretic use. Second, we have cirrhosis or congestive heart failure. These two causes leading to en enhance the activation of renin aldosterone 
renin angiotensin aldosterone axis. So this patient has secondary hyperaldosteronism. Patient may have renal artery stenosis and discuss previously how patient with renal artery stenosis will develop secondary hyperaldosteronism. Patient may have renin producing tumor, patient may have malignant hypertension, and patient may have the coarctation of aorta. Look at the other hand, if the patient has decreased plasma renin activity and also the plasma aldosterone concentration is also decreased, but the patient, remember that please, has hypertension with hypokalemia. What are the differential diagnoses for this situation? We must put in mind the patient may have Cushing syndrome, may have congenital adrenal hyperplasia, may have glucocorticoid resistance, and also may have exogenous manilocorticoid use. After we know that the patient has primary hyperaldosteronism regarding this uh, interpretation, we must, uh, we must follow the following. First of all, we must know that almost all antihypertensive drug will interfere with the aldosterone renin ratio. For example, we have beta blocker, which will inhibit the renin, uh, which will inhibit the renin production. So this patient may have false positive result. While diuretics will stimulate renin secretion and may have false negative result. So this patient with increased aldosterone renin ratio require further tests after stopping this offending drug for at least about four weeks. In this time, we can use a calcium channel blocker as substitute. Second note, we have oral potassium supplementation also may require because you must know that serum uh, potassium when it will be decreased as the case of hypokalemia, it will inhibit renin activity. After we normalize the potassium level and stop this drug wall which interfere with, with the aldosterone renin ratio, we must obtain a blood test and repeat the plasma renin activity, plasma aldosterone concentration and calculate the ratio. If the ratio of uh, if the aldosterone renin ratio is still elevated, which is usually more than 20, and the plasma aldosterone concentration is also elevated, which is about uh, 15 nanogram per deciliter, we have suspect primary hyper aldosteronism. And to confirm the diagnosis, we must do the following. We must do which was known as saline infusion test. In saline infusion test, we have two liter of physiological saline, which is given to patient over four hours in IV routes. If aldosterone fails to suppress to less than 10 nanogram per deciliter, the confirmation of primary hyperaldosteronism is made. So the next step 
we must know what is the source for the secretion of aldosterone. So, after confirmation of the diagnosis by cell and infusion test, we must do an enhanced CT scan. So, an enhanced CT scan or MRI of the adrenal gland to look the uh, the, the, the gland itself. If there is unilateral adrenal mass, so the patient if uh, if has unilateral adrenal mass and he uh, he is less than 40 year old, younger than 40 year old, we will proceed with adrenalactomy. If the patient is more than 40 year old, but surgery is practical and desired we must do adrenal vein sampling if, and if the patient has lateralization which is mean positive result for one gland to obtain uh, more and uh, to, to which show more an increased level of aldosterone so we can do also adrenalectomy Second finding, if there is bilateral micronodular hyperplasia, which is showed by the CT scan of RMI, which is uh, in this case we must uh, with, we must follow this regimen. We can use drug treatment, and the drug and include we have two groups. Either we have manolo uh, corticoid receptor antagonist, or we have amyloride, for example. If the patient, if the patient uh, in the previous case, which has unilateral adrenal gland, but uh, but he uh, he is more than 40 year old, and the adrenal vein sampling is negative, we also follow the uh, drug treatment, which is medical treatment. The third case, the patient has normal adrenal morphology, but put in mind that this patient has a family history of early onset hypertension so you must screen for glucocorticoid remediable aldosteronism which is a rare genetic disorder in which aldosterone secretion is solely under the control of ACTH so if the patient positive for this condition the treatment will be with dexamethasone the dosage is just usually mentioned here. If the patient is negative for this condition, so we must proceed with the drug treatment, which is including manolocorticoid antagonists or amyloride. Some important notes about medical treatment. The manolocorticoid antagonist, there are only two drugs, which is including spirinolactone and eblirinone. These two drugs are manolocorticoid receptor antagonists. This drug will block the manolocorticoid receptor, so that prevents the action of aldosterone. The effect is include lack of intracellular protein that stimulates the sodium potassium exchange so this drug will 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 stimulate will will produce its effect by lack the intracellular protein that stimulates sodium potassium exchange in the collecting tubule that aldosterone antagonism prevents sodium reabsorption and therefore are potassium and proton will be excreted in urine. The side effect of this drug, the very important side effect including the following, we have gynecomastia which is included breast tissue enlargement in male which is usually developed in 10 percentage of cases regarding the spinirolactone put in mind. And also there is menstrual cycle 
irregularities in these females. So we have gynecomastian male and menstrual cycle irregularities female. The more selective menylocorticoid antagonism Ebririnone can be used in this case when the spinorectone induced gynecomastia or menstrual cycle irregularities. These both drugs cause hyperkalemia as a side effect, so it is known as potassium sparing diuretics. But in this case, the patient already has hypokalemia, so this side effect is, uh, is not usually occur. The second group of the of drug which is known as epithelial sodium channel blocker. So epithelial sodium channel blocker, which is including amyloride and triamethyrin. This drug blocks the apical sodium channel and therefore decrease sodium that required for exchange with potassium and sodium potassium exchange. So this produce similar effect of manolocorticoid antagonism. This drug will be discussed in details under the, the video of uh, diuretics. So not this just a review for this drug. So we have the whole thing regarding the diagnosis, regarding the treatment of patient with hyperaldosteronism. We focusing on this case and the primary hyperaldosteronism. Why are secondary hyperaldosteronism we must treat the underlying condition. Thank you very much.